Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of the CryptoMed series. In today's video, I will be showing you how to use CryptoMed with instances, especially with the AI stand-in or for instance, a MASH instancer object. Um, it is a bit more advanced. I would say you would need to do some little Python coding um, and first of all, generate all these objects. So the first step I would say we do is we just create a little scene just that I can show you what the problem is. So if I have a ground plane like this and the first thing I want to do is create an AI stand-in. A stand-in is like a reference of an object on disk and you can have several instances or duplicates of this stand-in and you will it won't uh, affect your memory consumption and the translation time are uh, really fast. So this is a stand-in which I loaded from the M2A website and it looks like this. It's a little soldier throwing a grenade. So currently if I enable the CryptoMAT AOVs, um, let me just create them like so and now we've got the crypto materials and if I now first off create a light, Skydome light, just quickly choose a image uh, let's just choose this guy. All right. All right, so the image is loaded and this is now what my soldier would look like as a stand-in, right? There it is in the sun, bright sun, and this is how the shader looks like. So the cool thing about stand-ins is if I just change the mode to maybe um, bounding box per object and I just control the and I'll just duplicate them several times. So now I'm duplicating all those instances of that one soldier and rendering. Did I start the render? I don't think so. So if I start the render now, you can see all those soldiers being instanced and it's, it's still very fast and very efficient. So let me just um, make sure progressive is on. And now you can see how easy it is to iterate over them. The problem is if you want to use CryptoMAT with instances, because they are the same object, CryptoMAT thinks it's one object and this is how it behaves. So the asset is one, the material is one, and the object is one, which won't help you if you want to change the color of one soldier. So to do this, um, you have an option to actually override certain uh, objects inside the stand in itself and to do so what you would need to do is create an attribute like an user attribute user data attribute onto each shape and then you would need to change a certain value on that and it is called crypto asset offset or object offset or material offset okay so it sounds a bit uh, complicated but it's it's actually not so before we need to do this all manually let's just try to do it on one guy so I'm selecting the stand in I make sure I'm selecting the shape by um, first having shapes enabled in the menu here and then I can click plus and then just select the shape and then I would go to attributes add attribute and now I would type in the, the m2a constant which is a default if you want to add user data and then underscore and then type crypto underscore object underscore offset. So this would actually change the instance object in memory. So you can change it to integer and hit OK. So now on this stand in, we've got this extra attribute. If I did it correct, or did I just delete it on the wrong guy now? Let's just undo quickly. Maybe I did it on this transforms. That's not there. There it is. So that was the problem. I again I did it on the wrong shape. So you can see it's actually on the transform. So this or is it not? Let's see. Uh no, I think it's it's correct. So this crypto object offset is actually on the shape. So if I render now, um you would still see no difference because we we just have one object now. But if I change the offset to, let's say, 1, we should essentially maybe 
maybe we should see another color popping up if not yeah so there there you see there was a change now in color which means cryptomat interprets this as a different object so what you can do now is just duplicate this one guy here and now we know it already has this attribute assigned so what i can do now is actually go to each shape and change the value here and you can see like with a few assets it's manage manageable to do it manually but as let's say you have a, a forest with thousands of trees and you want to have this kind of control um, you you are pretty quickly on your limitations with manual work so then obviously you need to start doing little python scripts or mel scripts to get this kind of stuff working so now you can see each object is actually a different object itself so because of this crypto object offset cryptomed knows about the differences and it treats them as such so they also look the same but crypto works on so now you can actually export this stuff and use it in nuke and actually just select a specific soldier so what i want to do now is i want to show you the approach with mash and mash is an instance uh, where you can pretty easily duplicate things and actually um, create a nice environment it's it's used for um for quick uh, environment setups or motion graphics it's a pretty advanced tool and you can also use xgen for this kind of thing um, but today i will be just showing it with mash so let's create an, a stand in i deleted the one just now choosing the soldier path under scenes and i will actually make them available these stand-ins um, in my source file so if you want to follow along be sure to be a patron with the source materials uh, rewards here and you have access to all the stuff to follow along as well so let's call this guy soldier just soldier one and um and this should be all we need to be doing so then we would go to the mesh menu and create a mesh network out of the selection and then on default it complains hey it needs only meshes so you can go on the option box of the network and make sure instances is enabled so if this is on and you hit apply and close you can see now the instances have been generated so i'm just i'll just like to open have the mesh editor open here and the menu as well so i just keep them teared off and floating around so if i would hit render now we should see the same thing the same beauty um, but the object is broken again so that's uh, the problem we had just now right so for now let's just do some mesh stuff so i'm distributing it on a mesh and the input mesh would be my plane uh, the input mesh would be my plane again okay so there we go middle mouse drag the, the plane and you can see now they are being um, distributed along the mesh and then i can change the number of points and we get lots of soldiers so let's try 200 soldiers and currently they are all looking in the same direction and now what we can also add on top is a randomizer so let's just create random add a random node no offset in y or xyz we just want a rotation so they're all random rotation and let's add a uniform scale and just i don't know just give them a little bit of scale difference change the um, remove the absolute scale so it also scales negatively so it's they're all not the same size i'm not exact sh exactly sure how to um, have them not intersect i'm pretty sure there must be an option somewhere to to not have them intersect i don't know if someone knows please let please let me know that would be very helpful so um if i hit save now and hit the render button we should have a lot more soldiers and you can see it still it doesn't matter to arnold it still renders very fast and now we have all these little guys in here everyone is throwing one a uh, grenade so i wouldn't like to be standing here but anyways you can see the instancing working perfectly so how would we do now how, how would we get crypto mat working so i couldn't find a way to do it directly inside the mash node to fix it or to add this 
um, object offset. So what I have been trying out and I found a workaround which which works pretty good actually. So you select the mesh instancer and in the in the mesh menu, right, which is my tail of menu on the left here, you can go to utilities and bake instancer to objects. So if I click this guy, um, it will give you a dialog and you can just bake this one frame or your animation if you need to. And let's just hit bake this frame and it will create all these instances in a group. And if I close this guy now, we should have them all in here. So you can see these are now all these instances um, coming from the instancer. So if I hide the instancer and, and I unhide the objects which have been generated, we should actually get something looking exactly the same. But instead of having a mesh instance object, we have several AI stand-ins. So now you can see the layout is actually the same. And if I hit render, we should still have the same results than before. And that's working fine. So this is now kind of the same thing we did in the first step. Now to get this whole thing working, we would need we would need to add the attribute to each shape manually and change this offset. So here comes now the, the little Python scripting. So I'm selecting all my um, objects which I have um, baked out. I will go to my Python editor. Uh, I can close these two windows and so let's start typing. I first want to import pyml.core uh, we're just a Python um, bridge. So selected, uh, executed that and I will store my current selection. Make sure you have only the shapes. So I selected all these guys so I click here and I select all and I hit the down arrow on the keyboard and you and this only selects the shapes so keep that in mind so let's just um, create a variable shapes and shapes are equal to the selection so the current selected ones are being stored in the shapes and there you can see they are all in here so the next step would be create a loop so for i which is a count a loop count for i in range and then we want to have the overall amount of instances. So we would say shapes, uh, we would say len, parentheses open and close, and in here you would put in shapes. So if I just execute this line, you can see it's 200 shapes. And if I um, do a colon and print i, we should get the whole loop printed. Um, I guess there is somewhere a spelling for i in range. And now you can see it prints out all my objects. So the next step would be to add this attribute. So shapes and then the index of the, my total group is i. So um, shape for the first iteration would be shape zero dot add adder. I want to add an attribute to this. I want to add an m2a constant underscore and now comes crypto underscore um, object underscore offset and it's an attribute type short so at equals short which means it's an in 16 bit integer like this so this would now add this attribute to each current selection and then the next step would be to set this attribute so shapes again uh, square brackets open close and then dot set adder instead and I'm just copying this attribute copy uh, in in I don't know what's called and then comma and then you want to assign a value you want to have a unique value right so instead of um, typing one value this would add two to all these objects I will just use I which is actually the range counter plus one um, and plus one is because the first one is zero it will like I don't want to have the default value to be zero so I want to have um, i plus one so it's always one more and this should actually do it so if I run this now it, you can see it created this object and on each instance there is a different one you can see these this number has been added to each shape node and if I hit save now not the script I mean the scene and I hit render 
we should get the same result but hopefully we should have crypto objects now in here and we actually do have them so this is would be the workaround how to use it with mash instead so i guess the same workflow would apply to xgen or any other procedural which instances your object for crypto mat to work you need to add these um, crypto object offsets so it knows about unique about the unique objects in it and obviously um, I can just quickly save this out uh, let's just see if I save a multi-channel if that actually works save multi-channel and uh, let's just call this crypto advanced soldier exr so this should be saved now and let's just quickly jump into nuke and i just want to see if it actually does work so let's just change my workspace to be on one monitor so there we go hit r for read uh advanced soldiers is here let's see if we have all the crypto objects we do have them and let's head over to a crypto object in nuke and if you don't have the crypto mat stuff in here please check out the part one of this series um, and i will show you how to install all these objects or these plugins so if i change my crypto mat to be oh well, let's see that that didn't work why doesn't it work interesting so it might be that we need to shuffle it out maybe that's why it doesn't work let's see in the worst case you need to do a batch render because i was just lazy i was grabbing this from um, the render viewer let's see if this this doesn't work i don't think it works matte output the layer selection doesn't work which is weird interesting matte output should be alpha that's correct so i'm not entirely sure um, let's just do it quickly using a batch output so let's head over to render globals change the driver type to merge uh, hit save i guess we will get the watermark now but doesn't matter so i hit just batch render and uh, let's check the script editor all right so the render is done now so let's check in nuke if i can bring it in and see if it works now so let's just delete these two nodes hit r again and see um if you can actually find it i think this should be this one mash instance open uh okay so let's connect this up again so now it does actually find the stuff so i think exporting the multi-channel from render view is not really working so you need to batch it out so you can see now we've got each object in here and if I hit the beauty and let's oh, let's first select a few guys. So I want this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy in the back, maybe this one and this one. Check the alpha, it's perfect. Hit the grade node, check through the grade node and let's just connect the mask and grade these guys down. You can see how really nice it works and it's very great like it there is no weird edges or anything it really just selects those guys and this would conclude the setup of using a uh, crypto mat with instances um there it's a little bit tedious i guess because you first need to reconvert them into instant uh, into st stand-ins um so if you would change your instance or your distribution you would redo this whole process with the um, python adding the attributes to your shapes and stuff like that so it is a bit more involvement but definitely it will give you so much more freedom especially if, if you have big environments and this mesh thing which i did right here was just a demo on how you could actually have a big asset so thanks for tuning in and let, again if you like this please give me a thumbs up and ob obviously subscribe to my channel and please be a, become a patron to get access to source files or other rewards which are on my reward tier list. So thanks again for tuning in and I hope you enjoy this.